dear students i will tell you about the fluctuation in populations and the population cycles in this lecture it is understood that population never goes straight to reach at the peak level and then to become in equilibrium rather there is always changes or fluctuations in the population abundance or population density these changes they may be regular or they may be irregular population dynamics reflect a complex interaction of biotic and abiotic influences so we can say that carrying capacity can vary and we can analyze this this sort of fluctuations in the population growth by collecting the every year data so some population they can fluctuate erratically we can say that irregular irregular fluctuation based on many factors and some other populations which can have regular boom and bust cycles or we can say that they can fluctuate regularly and the good example for this regular uh, fluctuation in population is lynx and snowshoe hare firstly you should know that uh, what are these two species we this example relates to the prey predation relationship in which the hare is prey and lynx is the predator snowshoe hare in fact Uh, it is the uh, species of hare which lives in the snow areas arctic areas and they have the uh, specialized uh, hind feet and these feet they help this uh, this species of hare to walk and run through the snow and to protect them from sinking into the snow and lynx is the species of the wild cat which which predate on the hare and these populations uh, populations of both of these lynx and snow sh- uh, snowshoe hare they typically reach a peak every 10 years and they uh, there is a regulation in their Uh, reaching at the peak and then again uh, the regulation in their population which can be shown in this um, graph and there is also the uh, we uh, lag relation the prey predation lag relationship between them in which the population of predator growth will lag behind that of the prey and if we take the example of the human population it is growing almost exponent- exponentially for 3 centuries but cannot do so indefinitely the human population increased relatively slowly until about 1650 when the plague took an untold number of lives ever since human population number have doubled twice how might this population increase stop this increase could be stopped by the density dependent factors as this graph shows the the slow growth of the human population until the plague came and after that the human population starts doubling uh, almost every year and this slide shows the number of pop human population until 1650 it grow uh, the growth was very slow and after that uh, uh, after every few years the population of human beings it got doubled and even tripled and if we compare the population characteristics in the highly developed and developing countries we can say that the highly developed countries have low birth rate they have low infant mortality because they have a very advanced uh, medical facilities and they also have plenty of food they there is no uh, such issue which the people of developing countries are facing so there is low birth rate low infant mortality they have low fertility rate 
they have long life expectancies they have high gni ppp gni ppp is the per capita gross national income in purchasing power parity and in contrast to these the developing countries they have high birth rate they have high infant mortality they have high fertility rate they have short life expectancies and they have low gross national income so if we try to estimate the earth's carrying capacity it is a very complex problem prediction of the human population vary from 7.3 to 10.7 billion people by the year 2050 so if we focus on the question what is the carrying capacity of the earth for humans this question is very difficult to answer but the estimates could be usually based on the food but on the other side the it is also this estimate is also not proper because the human agriculture limits the assumptions on available amounts the best answer to this question can be given by understanding the concept of ecological footprints the concept of an ecological footprint it uses the idea of multiple constraints not just food but some other factors also together they form ecological footprint so if we want to define the ecological footprint an ecological footprint is an estimate of the amount of land required to provide the raw material an individual or a population consumes including food fuel water housing and waste disposal for each nation we can calculate the aggregate land and water area in various ecosystem categories six type of ecological productive areas are distinguished in calculating the ecological footprints land suitable for crops pasture forest ocean built up land and fossil energy land so if we compare the developing and developed countries ecological footprint we can say that the developing countries they tend to have people overpopulation that degrades the environment and in developed countries have consumption overpopulation that degrades the environment yani jo developing countries hain wahan par kyunki population zyada hai logon ki population zyada hone ki wajah se jo environment ko ह्यूमन बींग्स की तरफ से होने वाले नुकसान आते हैं वो भी ज़्यादा हैं जबकि डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज़ में क्योंकि लोगों का लाइफ स्टाइल इस किस्म का है कि उनके जो हाई लाइफ स्टाइल को मेंटेन रखने के लिए दे कंज्यूम अ लॉट ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्स दैट्स वाई दे और ऑल्सो काजिंग द डिग्रेडेशन इन द इन्वायरमेंट एंड दिस पिक्चर शोज द a uh, relationship between the ecological footprint and that is the requirement of the land and other resources and in available ecological capacity so we can conclude our topic with this the the few sentences that we may never know our carrying capacity for humans but we have the unique responsibility to decide our fate and the fate of the rest of the biosphere